In this video, we will review how to install the SRM20 Engraving Accessory Kit. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and lower the front lip of the machine. This is just held on magnetically so we can pull it down to reveal that. Next, we want to remove all four thumb screws located at each corner of the orange bed. If this is a new installation, you may need a Phillips screwdriver to get these started, and if not, you may be able just to loosen these and remove them entirely from the machine. Following the removal of the thumb screws, we can then remove the orange bed, like so, and set this to the side. We will now want to use the four uh, offset spacers included with the SRM20 engraving accessory kit. I'm going to fix one of these to each of those four studs used to hold the bed up. And once that we have those in, I'm going to use pliers or a spanner just to get these slightly past hand tight. With the idea being that we don't want these to rattle loose or uh, come apart during you know various operations. So with those set, we are then free to move on to the next step. I'm going to install just the right side thumb screws, leaving a little threading exposed, and I will now reinsert the bed. Notice that these are slotted, so we should be able to guide those right in on the right side, and have the left side sort of floating on the platform there. Okay. Now before we secure the left side, I'm going to take the indexing fixture that comes with the SRM20 engraving accessory kit and place this right on top here. We can then use the thumb screws to fix this to the platform. And note when you fix these that there's a small slotted part within the fixture and you want to make sure that that is seated within the uh, thumb screw there. So there should be no movement uh, laterally or you know or anything like that once you get this secured. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the rear. And got that started. Get these nice and snug. Go ahead and fix the left side. Tighten those down and we are all set. Moving along, we can now install the AS10 sheet. This is an adhesive hold down material that we will use uh, to hold down to various uh, sheet plastics and fixtures as we move on here. So I removed one side of the sheet now we'll gently roll this on with the material index to our corner here and just kind of slide this on like so. All right, now we have, now have this in place here. Uh, really the idea behind raising this bed up is to allow full range of our short reach toolkit found uh, within the engraving accessory kit. Without raising this bed, our tools may not have the reach within the spindle to, um, to travel all the way down to the material. So this ensures that our tooling is in range with our bed and we are all set. One other thing to note with this setup here, uh, if we were going to go with the rotary engraving workflow, we can remove this adhesive liner on the AS10 sheet, load our material, and just have at it. Uh, alternatively, if we were going to go uh, with the diamond scribing workflow. We can then take 
the other fixture that comes included in that engraving accessory kit. Take our centering vise, either laid out horizontally or verti vertically. Place that into the fixture. Load this into the machine. Place it like so, and then set up our origins for use with the centering vise. Don't forget to remove your release liner before securing whatever material you plan to run on this. In the next videos, we will take a look at how to set up an engraving workflow for rotary tooling using VCarve Desktop or diamond scribing tooling. Next up, we will take a look at loading the engraving tools into the spindle of the SRM20. Now before doing so, it may be worth uh, taking a look at the different styles of collets used. The SRM20 comes standard with this sort of set screw type collet where you can load in the tool, set the height, and then lock it in place with the set screw uh, before actually fixing it into the spindle. The SRM20 engraving kit comes with more of a conventional style uh, collet here, which will actually clamp the tool into place once fixed into the machine. So both are very effective collets, just different ways of installing them into the machine. To get started, uh, we can take a look at the spindle and remove any existing collet within uh, the spindle itself. Right now we have one of the set screw type loaded in. So I'm going to grab my 17 millimeter spanner, hold the spindle in place, and then remove that collet. This will be in a counterclockwise motion if looking at the spindle from the bottom side up. Next, we will take a look at loading our actual collets here. So on the screen, I have the clamp style collet here. I have my CNC V-bit, and I will just go ahead and load this in, setting it at the depth uh, in the collet that I want to set. So something like this should be good. I just want to make sure that I have enough of the shank uh, seated into that clamp before loading it in. We can now go ahead and grab that spindle again. Load that collet into place, and this time turning that collet with a clockwise motion if looking at it from the bottom up. Now I've got the threading started on that. Uh, to really secure this into place, I will now grab my 17 millimeter spanner to grab the spindle, the 10 millimeter to grab the actual collet. And I'll pull these apart to fasten the tool. Now this is another one similar to the bed offsets where we want to get it uh, just tight enough to where it won't come loose, but not too tight to where it will give us trouble uh, upon removing it or swapping out tools. So I'm going to get another good uh, three-quarter turn on there. That will fix our tool into place. And we are now good to go to set origins and begin engraving. Should your workflow require the diamond scribe tool here, it would be the exact same process uh, with the other clamping collet and spring-loaded diamond scribe tool. So we will grab the spindle, we will remove the collet, we would then insert this one in its place and we'd follow the same procedure to load in our various tooling.